Welcome to this video. We are looking today at creating a part of a dashboard. We will use some interesting formulas and tricks to pull data from a data page that you can see here into this little table and we'll use this table to produce a dynamic chart. So what uh, we need to go through is some data validation, applying some name ranges, writing some if equations, and then uh, pulling the data through into our table. So I'm going to get right into it. Basically what the data is, is um, a whole lot of uh, matches. These are soccer, football matches. Each one has got a date, an opponent. The opponent has a world ranking. There's a result from the game, a score, some um, various variables for both the home team and the opposition. So that's what we want to be able to use as um, our, our method of extracting data. So I've got some criteria in here. We want to be able to filter based upon date. Show me only the, the games from the last 12 months, for example. So to do that, we have to open up this criteria and make it usable. So I'm going to apply some data validation both to the start date and the end date. What I want to do is in data validation, I want to apply date, start date, and I'm going to use that. And I'm just going to put a little input message tip I'm also going to apply that to the error message. The reason for taking a little bit of effort to put that into the data validation is that dates are often done um, a little bit incorrectly. I'm from the uh, bottom of the world where we put day before month. Some people may not be, so it's good to tip people and cue them to do the right thing. The next thing I want to be able to sort by is a criteria around world ranking. So as you can see in the data, there's a, a world ranking based upon um, the team they play. Sometimes you might really only want to see the results of games against the top 10. So I'm going to use control to select both of these two. I'm going to put some data validation in. I'm going to say a whole number between 0 and 30. And in this result criteria, you might just want to look at games that you won or lost or drew. So once again, I'm going to go data validation. This time I'm going to put list. Sometimes you can refer to a range, but given that there's only three variables, I'm just going to type them in, which is a, a nice little option when there's only, you know, maybe it's yes, no, or maybe it's uh, something like this circumstance with just three. All right, so if I now pick some information from here, it will allow me to go onto the other page and use the criteria to exclude some data. So what I want to be able to do is only pull out results of matches that match these criteria. You might want to use all the criteria, you might just want to use some or, or one of them. So to be able to do that, a trick that I've been using quite regularly is to um, use very simple Boolean logic. Boolean logic means that something's either a 1 or a 0. It's either true or false. So to make some of my formulas a little bit easier, I'm just going to use some named ranges. So I'm going to type start date, end date, And as we'll see in a 
second, these criteria and these named ranges will be uh, very helpful when we're writing some formulas. Okay, so I'm going to go across to the data page. Here's all the data, and just to the right of them, I've created some column headings for our different criteria. We'll talk about the country one at the end, but first of all, I just want to talk about the date criteria. So I want to include a match so long as it falls between the start date and the end date. So the date is in column A. So I'm going to write this formula. So if our date is greater than or equal to the start date, and our date is less than or equal to the end date. So if it meets both of those two criteria, put a 1, otherwise put a 0. So the date that we have got meets the criteria, that's why it's got a 1. If I drag this down, we should see I think it goes to about row 75, there we go. We should see a few zeros and a few ones. Great, so that works. Now what we want to also do is look at some of these other options. So the ranking criteria also needs to be used in the same way. So I'm going to scoop up this because it'll help us <clears throat> and save a little bit of time. Our criteria is in column C. So if the ranking is greater than or equal to the low rank, And if the ranking is greater than or equal to the high rank, less than or equal to the high rank, sorry, then it gets a 1 or a 0. So I apply that all the way down. And so already I've got the ability to filter out based upon whether a game is played in the date range and against a team with the appropriate ranking. Alright, now we'll just put the third criteria, that is the result criteria. Result is in column D. There you go, that one was pretty easy. that down. Okay, so we've got our three criteria in place and what really you want to be able to do is pull out everything that meets your criteria. So the trick that I use is I simply go one criteria times another criteria times another criteria and anything that meets all the criteria is a 1 because it's got 1 times 1 times 1. Any 0 in there turns that particular match off. So now what I'm going to do is start building this table. We've got a few more things to do yet but I just want to get some progress in place. So I'm going to use average if. So if there's a 1, I'll lock that because we can drag that across. If there's a 1 there, then I want you to give me the average of, I believe it is column F. 
So I'm going to lock the numbers, but not the letters. So this number here <coughs> is telling me that there is an average of 48 attacking entries for our team when we play against uh, opponents and matches that meet these criteria. Now I'm just going to change the date to make sure things modify themselves and they do. And because I haven't locked that last variable, the f, when I drag it across it's going to change. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag it one more across and pull it all the way over. And that should say, oh, all right, so what we've done here is we've created a little table that produces information, simple summary statistics based upon the criteria that we've selected. So if I change this to loss, that changes. If I change the criteria to 30, things change. So we've got a good starting point. Something that we haven't factored in is that if we delete a criteria such as that, we've got a problem. So we're going to have to revisit the formulas on the other page to allow for one or more of the criteria to be blank. Now it's a little bit messy, but if you're okay with AND and OR functions, this won't be too bad. So what we've got at the moment is that it has to be greater than or equal to the start date or less than or equal to the end date. So I want to be able to say if the start date is equal to nothing, then that's also okay. So if either start date's empty or start date is um, less than or equal to our match date, then it works. And similarly, I need to do that to the end date. So that will now allow us to have that criteria blank. The same thing can be done here. Close that bracket off and result, I'll put an OR and copy that down. Forgot to copy that one down. So now our criteria shouldn't be affected if we delete the dates. All it should do is include more data. So if I delete everything, it should include everything. Once I start filtering in any way, it should start changing the data for us. So what I'm going to do is create a little chart nice so what I want to be able to do is manipulate my data and see the results change one thing that we haven't done is uh, probably the most complicated and interesting one Sometimes you might only want to demonstrate matches against a particular opponent or set of opponents. So 
I want to pull that one in. We left this column blank in the other page. So <clears throat> firstly, I'm just going to apply some data validation. All right, so I can just choose include. And I want to name this table. country selector. So I can choose any of the countries that I want to be having on my list. So this country criteria is simply going to say equals if If we look up our country in that country selector table we just created, and so I've really just replicated our situation from previously. We've got the table on the previous page where things are included or not. And as long as it's got include next to it, it's going to allow that to have a one. And so I'm just going to tidy up this so that it includes our country criteria. So now I can pull across and delete the result, any of the data that I want. So we've got the ability now to play with the data that gets inserted into this table simply by using multiple criteria. And each of the criteria are, are able to be interacted with with some kind of drop down list that allows filtering to occur on the data. Now this kind of process is very valuable when you're working with a, a thousand rows of data because it really starts to, to narrow down on the things that you want. You can include any criteria you like in this obviously. It would just require more columns to be inserted and um, the same formulas to therefore be applied later on. Thanks for stopping by. If you want a copy of the spreadsheet, let me know. See you next time.